Hello and welcome to another Thought for the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we ask again that you speak to us through your word. We pray that we may learn all of these amazing things that you have made possible for us in the life that you bring us in your risen Son. Him who has promised us that he came to bring us life and life to the full. So we ask that we may learn how we might live this life to his glory. Amen. So we're reading uh, in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we're in the second part of our little uh, mini mini series uh, how not to be anxious this is part two we looked at the beginning of this section yesterday and we're again considering uh, the business of anxiety we live in an anxious world don't we where there are lots of things around us which are anxiety causing now it needs to be said that there are people who have conditions which require medical assistance maybe temporary, maybe long term. And I'm not saying that there's a kind of like a magic bullet which deals with all anxiety everywhere. There are people whose minds somehow don't seem to work properly and they need some professional assistance. So let's say that to begin with so that we are not actually casting uh, accusations of guilt or lack of faith or whatever it might be uh, that uh, it could be conceived of that we were saying. However, anxiety is something that probably affects all of us, some more than others, maybe because of the type of person that we are. And Jesus is concerned about this broad base of thinking of the world, which actually causes us to re react in a way where we worry about things. So you can see what his examples are illustrating. These are fundamental needs in life. So we all have needs and God knows that we have needs. So what is he saying in this section? Well, the contrast is between the pagan and the believer. So what's that difference mean? It means the one who does not know God who has no relationship with God, who doesn't perhaps even want to believe that God exists, and the person who knows that God is his heavenly father. You see that phrase, your heavenly father. And here is the magnificent truth that the Christian is brought into. You have a heavenly father. And Jesus is concerned to teach us that this Heavenly Father has an attitude to us which tells us that he knows first, he cares second, and he gives three. So he is a good father. Now, not all of us have had good fathers. Some of us sadly have had terrible experiences with growing up and the way that we were treated. So this is in contrast, if that was the case with you, but many of us have had good fathers who provided for us, even at sacrificial cost to themselves, even when it was hard going. Well, for us, God is even more of a good father than they are because he is absolutely good. So what is this saying? Well, we started off by saying we have needs. And when we have needs, we feel those needs. We feel we are hungry or we are thirsty or we are cold, whatever that might be. For the Christian, our needs must not determine our gauge of God's goodness. And here is the big difference. You see, we can tend 
to re reflect what we believe about how good God is being to us by whether we have needs met or we don't have needs met. So life goes on fine and we're OK and we have faith in God. We believe in him. Uh, we believe that we come to him and we pray and we do all of the Christian things that we're supposed to do. Then something happens and we're left with a need, with a want, with something that hasn't quite lined up in life and hasn't given us something quite basic. And we can begin in our hearts to say to ourselves, well, God is not being good to me in this respect. So what I have to do is I, I either have to take things into my own hands and uh, actively search for how I uh, supply these needs of mine or I panic. And the panic is the anxiety. What, what am I going to eat? Where's tomorrow's meal coming from? What, what am I going to drink? And fundamentally, what God is saying to us is that there is a wrong thinking behind this because we are doubting the goodness of God. Remember what we just said? He knows, he cares and he gives. And Paul, in actual fact, in the last chapter of Philippians, uh, he addresses this as well. He says, I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I've learned how to be in plenty and I've learned how to be in want and whichever one of those it is or anything in between I am content how can he be content when he's in want when he has these needs which are unmet well it's because he knows that whatever he is going through God is still good and this is what I want you to get hold of today whatever you are going through God is still good he promises to provide every need of yours in accordance with his riches in Christ Jesus and you can rely on his goodness so don't measure God's goodness by your needs measure your needs by God's goodness if he has provided it it's because it is a need that he sees and a need that he has pro provided if you haven't got it it means that that isn't really a fundamental need that he needs to be meeting at this time. So here is the final word on anxiety. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Jesus says you have enough worries in one day. That's all of the quota that God has intended you to carry. So as you live through your day, you present these needs to God. You pray about them, you ask him for them and you look to him, the good God, to provide them for you. He knows what your needs are. He cares. He's a loving Heavenly Father and he gives. Ultimately, he is the best provider in the whole of the universe. So he can be trusted. I'm going to close with the words from a lovely hymn. Uh, the hymn starts like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. And the chorus has been updated, actually, uh, to reflect the new covenant uh, and what we know about Jesus, the Son of God, the, the, the chorus goes, stayed upon Christ Jesus, hearts are fully blessed, finding as he promised, perfect peace and rest. But here's the second verse, hidden in the hollow of his blessed hand, never foe can follow, never traitor stand. Not a surge of worry, not a shade of care, not a blast of hurry, touch the spirit there let's come to God in prayer father God we pray that we will learn how to place our anxieties at the feet of the living Lord Jesus knowing that in him you provide for us in according with his riches and not even in according with our need in his name we pray amen